What is going on everybody? This is John Hester here. I'm at Hester's Motorsports in Raton, New Mexico and I am going to be going over a couple of uh, bikes right here. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give us a like. It really helps with YouTube algorithms. As everybody knows, YouTube algorithms are... And if you don't share videos or like videos or you know subscribe and all that other stuff then the outreach is it, it's not going to reach the people that need to see this basically so <laughs> um so here today we have two kawasaki ninjas 2023s and we're going to go over what the differences is now unfortunately i'm sorry i did not have a regular ninja 400 in a, a krt left this was my absolute last one and it's actually sold they're doing paperwork right now so i got to do this in a hurry <laughs> so the gentleman can get on his bike and go ride today um but i really wanted to show side by side what the difference is in between a ninja 400 and a ninja 400 john what the heck are you talking about well if you haven't heard the internet completely explode and melt down this is the ZX4RR. That is a Ninja 400, which is the model designation is an EX400. So we're going to get down into the nitty gritty and go through this. Uh, I'm going to, it's going to be as quickly as a video as I can. It's not going to be 30 minutes or anything, but just give me a few minutes. Please, I hope you stay to the end of this so that way we can get through this. And any questions, anything, comment below. Tell me what you think below. Which one of these bikes would you rather have? What do you think is the best value? What is the purpose that you're going to use your bike for? I'd sure love to hear more of that from you. So we're going to start out with the EX400, the Ninja 400. This is an ABS model in the pearl white. So the KRT model and this model are the same MSRP price of $58.99. So for $58.99, you get a fantastic bike here. And um, the Ninja 400s are already dominating racetracks and everything in, in that 400 class. And it's been a fantastic bike and it's really fun. It's got an impressive mid-range to it. Um, very good on economy, fuel, insurance is very cheap, all that stuff. It, it's very appealing to not just beginner riders, but intermediate riders and advanced riders absolutely love this bike now some people might say oh no i want you gotta have a 1000 and uh, man i'll tell you <laughs> it's smiles per mile man smiles per mile and i'll i'll tell you it's it's absolutely thrilling it, it is so much funner to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow so most people really can't even handle you know 600s or 1000s and and i'm being honest yeah you can go down a, a straightaway and stuff like that but you get onto a track and i've seen videos of ninja 400s eating alive modified ninja h2s <laughs> the rider is what's faster than the so keep that in mind you know it's 80 percent rider 20 percent bike you get on a track and you can lay some serious lap times on something like this. Now on a straightaway, yeah, a big 1000, especially an H2, is just going to absolutely annihilate this like a Bugatti Veyron passing a Yugo. Come on, let's be serious about that. But the Ninja 400 is a great all-around bike. It's super light. It's super easy to ride. The clutch is so easy and buttery smooth. You could shift all day with the pinky. Look at that. Like nothing. It's butter absolute butter you have a 12,000 rpm redline analog uh, tack the digital speedometer all your basic instrumentation so this is you know an economy class bike so everything about this is this is what we call a real world ninja so this is a bike that you're going to buy and you're going to drive around every day to and from work get 70 80 miles to the gallon on this thing and just have a blast doing it go ring its nuts off in the canyon and have a smile across your face you're just ripping through the gears and you look down you're doing like 100 miles an hour and you're like what 
you know <laughs> you're not doing 200 miles an hour like on a 1000 you know you don't need to go that fast to have a blast you know so keep that in mind that's another thing um, this ninja 400 here like I said you have uh, an upper clamp on style fork it has raised handlebars it gives you a much more comfortable seating position this is why I call it a real-world ninja the foot pegs are down and forward and uh, uh, good uh, sport touring tires on this so you have you know a good well-rounded tire it's gonna get good miles and it's gonna handle pretty decent on uh, the canyons and roads you got decent brakes you know when I call decent I mean this this isn't gonna you know you touch the brakes and it wants to slam your face in the windshield stopping power but it's very very good <laughs> um, you know for its class because it's so light it's so light keep that in mind super lightweight uh, single disc in the rear large single rotor in the front wave rotors um, and you have uh, let's see if I can read this sorry I have my don't have my reader glasses man I'll tell you it sucks getting old and having to have cataract surgery uh, 150 there you go right there there's the tire size okay so that's the rear and then the front okay and we're gonna see 110 70 okay I'm, I'm showing these these details because it's important a little bit later on so I'm really covering this bike and explaining this bike uh, outright to you um, this is a parallel twin 399 cc engine produces 45 horsepower okay LED lights, beautiful styling. They're styling it and shaping it kind of like an H2 body work to it. So that's Kawasaki's uh, current uh, design language in the Ninjas, which is always gorgeous uh, with a beautiful pearl white paint job. I mean, look at the sunshine in that thing. And like I said, this is the ABS model. So it is the, the highest end model on this class of bike. So it does have Kawasaki's anti-lock brake system on it. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick overview on the green one. Uh, kind of sucks this truck parked right next to it, but I'm gonna get around as best as I can. So, <laughs> gotta deal with customers when you're uh, doing it in front of a dealership. So, the ZX4RR. This is where everything completely is thrown out the window in between these bikes. Other than it's, this is a 400cc and that's a 400cc. That is literally the, the 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 only thing that's the same, you know. I mean, you could argue and say, oh well, you know, the mirrors are the same, and the levers are the same, and the grips are the same. You can go and be that anal and say stuff like that. Well, yeah, you know, but essentially, I would say ninety five percent, maybe even slightly more, is completely different on this bike than that bike. The ZX class. ZX is a super sport class designation. The RR means race ready. This is designed to do one thing, and that is to absolutely dominate the 400 class. There is nothing on this earth in that class that will even remotely come close to this bike. The price on this bike, the ZX4RR, is $96.99. Now you're probably sitting there wondering why on earth would I spend almost four grand more for this 400 versus that 400. Four grand! What the heck? I could almost buy a, a, a 600. Well, not really. I mean, you're going to spend a few thousand dollars more for a 600. But this is a whole other beast. First, let's start out with the bodywork. As you can tell, the body is completely different. It has that same, like I said, that design language. But you can immediately tell one big massive ram air intake versus no ram air intake. So this actually has ram air induction to increase its potential the faster you go. Like I said, 45 horsepower, including the ram air, 80 horsepower. 
nearly a hundred percent increase of power in between these two bikes i mean change the exhaust you'll clear that flash ecu you've decimated that that hundred percent margin uh, on a power increase this is a krt edition which stands for kawasaki racing team replica colors so you have kawasaki race team colors on here so it's going to look just like a kawasaki race bike all of these bikes have abs that's standard equipment then you get into the rear serious stuff this you have a steel trellis frame pretty simple very effective frame for this class of a bike this you have an aluminum frame a boxed aluminum frame it is much stronger much much stiffer so that on a racetrack under extreme g force loads under cornering or swapping from left to right there's going to be less straight line twist of the chassis and not to mention flex of the chassis this way under those extreme loads you have no idea what some of these chassis go through under those loads like that and of course both these machines the engine is a stressed member of it meaning that there's no frame underneath here so the engine is a stressed member completing this triangular uh, uh, orientation of the frame so you have a much lighter much stronger frame you have an inline four cylinder versus a parallel twin parallel twin good well round power easy to ride great bottom end and low you know low end and mid-range torque so you get good roll on power the inline four you're going to sacrifice a little bit of that low end power in order for peak performance with a red line of near 16,000 rpms 4,000 rpms higher than that one over there this is part of the reason why we're able to generate this type of horsepower multi-cylinders with a much higher rpm remember horsepower is a mathematical equation of torque versus rpms okay so just keeping it basic and simple but like i said everything is different the fuel tank is totally different the bodywork is totally different you see how the bodywork is designed to channel air through and around the engine and into the into the uh, uh, radiators here look at the scoops on the side here to get more air in to this machine because it has a much larger radiator and of course if you haven't noticed this has two brakes so you have a dual brake rotor system on it with a radial mount caliper versus a standard standard fork you have a conventional style fork see the the inner shaft is at the top with the main piston at the bottom this is the inverted fork so you have a much larger diameter than that inner part up there see that's the part right up here that it this is your clamping area this is the diameter here so the smaller diameter means more flex larger diameter much more rigid more rigid on a race bike means much more precise handling on a racetrack you have the clamps that mount under the bars to get the bars lower you can physically tell the bars are quite a bit lower on this versus that one over there i mean you can just see this one's almost by the lever there and that one's well above i mean the mirror that one's well above the mirror with the radial mount calipers this thing has tremendous stopping power i would say in excess of three times the braking force on this front wheel versus that one over there so this is meant <laughs> to to bring you down from speed exceptionally fast the wheels are different they look the same but they are different these are wider wheels because it also fits a wider 120 tire let's see if i can yeah it's probably up underneath here but yeah you have a 120 uh 120 60 or 120 70 sorry I, I i don't have that memorized right in front of my head like i said i'm in a hurry and i'm trying to get this done so 
don't kill me <laughs> feel free to quote below oh any specs whatever like that i can have below but um you have a much wider tire and of course a more sport bike oriented tire so this is a totally different tire than this one over here and the compound is much stickier so this is a better tire for a street and race bike like as like any other zx ninja is going to have in the rear the tail light it is pretty close but as you can tell the bodywork is completely different much cleaner much slimmer much more aerodynamic the rear rim i'm gonna let this gentleman leave real quick here So the rear rim and tire is much wider as well so you have a wider rim and you have a wider I think this is the 160 ah, dang it I apologize I didn't have all of this dead memorized yeah 160 so there you go you got a 160 uh, on the rear so uh, 10 millimeter wider tire even though it says a 10 millimeter because of the wider rim you can physically see how much wider that tire actually is okay <clears throat> totally different swing arm you have a aluminum swing arm on this one and as you can tell how it comes back and swoops down this is zx10 design as well as the lateral mounted uh, suspension system on the rear and the suspension system is fully tunable on the ZX4RR now listen I know a lot about suspension I mean we do a lot of suspension stuff side by sides ATVs all that stuff and I used to race uh, pro motocross but <laughs> the cost of this suspension to be able to do something like this uh, to this bike over here um, to be able to convert all these parts and be able to put an inverted fork and dual calipers, you're going to drop way more than five or six grand in just to do that onto this bike. And you haven't even touched the engine. So the cost value in between these two bikes, what you get, I mean, this is like, you know, this is like looking at a V6 Mustang. And, th and this is a Corvette, okay? I mean, come on. I'm just using car analogies just to kind of put a point across there because of the, how big of a difference it is. It's uncomparable in all the technology. Suspension, braking, power, aerodynamics, handling, everything is on a whole other level, whole other level on this thing. It is ridiculous. Moving on, <laughs> now we get into some more serious technology. So like I said, you know, the suspension is a massive upgrade and you've got uh, your adjustability on the forks, full adjustability on the shock. I mean, this thing has some awesome suspension. Then you'll notice the controls are much, much different. See, we have a lot more buttons to play with, a lot more stuff to deal with here because on this bike, that that bike does not have traction control no traction control dual power modes where you can change the power characteristics the power delivery of the machine no power mode one power that that's what you get which it's good don't get me wrong it's fine i'm just t stating a fact then you have kawasaki's quick shifter which is awesome quick shifter allows you to just bang gears without touching the clutch wide open throttle just run that run the nuts off this thing up to 16,000 and yeah, baby! just microsecond shifts just tremendous on how fast that thing shifts so you get to just click off shifts like nobody's business there you have all the right app stuff all the all the good techno goodies you know connect your phone bluetooth all that 
all that cool stuff but i mean to have uh, no other bike in existence in this type of class has a traction control has power modes has a quick shifter you know you got the slipper clutch on it this one has a slipper clutch on it as well which is an amazing part to have on an economy class bike that makes that sucker so easy to shift and so smooth and the uh, delivery through the clutch is very very nice on the regular ninjas but whenever you lay them side by side it's just it's an uncomparable difference in between the two machines and as the x4r it is <laughs> it is it is a real deal uh, super excited about you know we had just got this in so we got it together got it out here this one was sold and i was just like i, I gotta knock this video out as quickly as possible here so i can i can do this and and just really show this thing off and, and hopefully explain, you know, where where $4,000 comes from. I mean, I, I don't care what you do to that. I, you're going to drop 10 grand into that to even slightly, remotely come close to this one. You will never have the chassis for racing. And now keep in mind, great street bike, everyday bike, ride to work fun in the canyons go have a blast it, it still does good on the track look at all the championships it's won <laughs> no question about it it's a good bike a good platform but i'm just apples and oranges the zx4rr is an amazing piece of technology for the money and it's just it's a staggering that they put this much work into the machine and this much engineering and detail and high-end parts top shelf brakes top shelf suspension an absolutely amazing engine with even more potential left in it i mean granted you know they always cork it up with catalytic converters and you know trying to make a really quiet exhaust to to keep all the tree huggers and everything <laughs> happy that's that's a fact you know all that stuff you know all that's all that good stuff you know don't get me started but anyways <laughs> not my subject i need to get into but it, you just have a whole different world machine here and and anybody that's seriously considering i mean if you if you are seriously considering like i want a bike that's going to shred the canyons and take me to and from work and get 70 miles of the gallon and and look wicked doing it and then i could hit a racetrack on a on a track day and just have an absolute blast dude go zx4rr all day long new rider intermediate rider hey i just i'm getting into bikes i want a good bike that's reliable it's fun to ride it's economical the insurance is dirt cheap on ninja 400 i mean that's that's the sheer basics of it and the best simplicity that i can tell in between the two bikes there on on what to do so both very nice machines we sold a lot of 400 ninjas but these four rrs are are something else very exotic machines very awesome so i'm gonna wrap this thing up like i said please if you haven't subscribed to our channel click that subscribe channel i got an awesome h2 in there we're bumping up to 300 horsepower gonna be doing some videos on that an h2 sx so i'm gonna have a 300 horsepower sport tour with saddlebags well i can put saddlebags on them. i don't ride with it all the time but gonna have some cool videos on that in there lots of videos that we're doing more how-to stuff really trying to up this channel a bit more and really appreciate you guys coming along for the ride and enjoy the views and and uh enjoy the content and all that cool stuff so i want to thank you all for watching god bless uh, i hope this was informative to you give you a lot of uh a lot of information there um give you that you know that real side by side comparison so you can see the difference and really understand why this one costs so much more thank you all for watching god bless and peace out